Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. So the other day I was kind of puttering around in the shack and I came across one of my old CB radios, in particular this old Lafayette SSB 140. Now I picked this radio up at a ham fest for 20 bucks and it worked. It had the extra channel modification in it, which I actually undid. There were some wires coming out of the top of the radio. Presumably somebody had some kind of a switch box connected to it. But that didn't come with the radio, just the wires were sticking out. Anyway, I took the wires off, undid all the jumpers on the, the PLL chip, put it back to stock, and it seemed to work. Um, you'll see later in the video that it, it still does work pretty well. I made some contacts on it, but I think it needs a little help. I think it needs an alignment or something. And then I also dug out my old President Grant here. I wanted to see if that still worked. I picked that up at an automotive flea market for five bucks. The guy didn't even know what it was. Uh, and it's a cool radio. It works really well. Cosmetically, it's in good shape. But we'll take a closer look at both radios here in a little bit. First up, let's talk a little bit about CB radio. So everyone probably already knows that CB has a bit of a reputation for being a little rough around the edges. And of course there is some truth to that depending on where you tune to. Um, you may hear some bad language and you know some poorly adjusted radios and that kind of a thing. Now at least in Connecticut, if you turn a CB radio on and tune around long enough, you're going to bump into some really great people out there. Uh, there's some operators that have been on the CB for 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. Now some of the guys on here are licensed hams, uh, but they like to kick back on CB. It's a little bit of a kind of more relaxed atmosphere so to speak and they have some friends still that maybe aren't licensed and aren't interested in getting licensed. So this is a place that they can still communicate with those people and play radio. But especially on the sideband channels, if you spend some time tuning around, at least here in Connecticut, you'll bump into some really great people. And we'll take a look at a couple of clips from recent conversations I had with these two radios uh, a little later in the video. But first up, we'll take a closer look at the radios so you can see what they are. So the first radio that I decided to fool around with was my old Lafayette uh, Telsat SSB 140. This is a 40 channel AM and single sideband radio. It's got a few kind of nice features in here like a automatic noise limiter, a noise blanker, it's got a built-in SWR meter, modulation meter, it's got the PA function, and it's got a high and low tone. And of course it's got controls down here for the SWR and modulation meter calibration. It's got an RF gain control, fine tune or clarifier for sideband, it's got the mode switch for lower sideband, upper sideband, and AM, and a mic gain control here. And of course, this is a typical 70s sort of styling. You've got the brushed aluminum face with the walnut or simulated walnut case. And one really nice feature about this radio is the front firing speaker. The microphone that I have hooked up is my old Silver Eagle. I've had this thing since I was a teenager. Uh, I used to run this on my unit and Madison and this microphone is a bit unique for a Silver Eagle in so much as that it's got uh, sort of an electronic control panel on the bottom. You can see it's got a provisions for Vox. It's got a 20 decibel attenuator if you need it and it's got a built-in Roger beep. And the Roger beep in this thing was kind of neat. It was just a, a very quiet polite little quick chirp and back in the day when I was raising hell on CB radio uh, everybody knew me by my distinctive uh, little chirpy Roger beep. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell from the video, but this microphone's been through the ringer. It needs a little bit of work. It's loose, and you may have noticed that, that one of the buttons here, even on the bottom, is broken. So it is what it is. I used and abused that microphone back in the day. The radio I haven't had for as long. I picked this up a few years ago at a ham fest. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, and it worked when I got it. Now, the pre one of the previous owners or whoever uh, did modify it. It had extra channels in it at one time. When I bought it, there was a ribbon cable coming out of the case right here. And presumably at some point there was a switch box or something connected to it. I didn't get that with the radio. So I took it apart. I took the ribbon cable out. And I did sort of a bit of an alignment on it. Now, the radio does seem to need a little bit of work. You'll see in the video when I transmit the lights really dim out 
when I modulate uh, and then the meters kind of swing around. So it, it needs a little bit of alignment or maybe power supply work or maybe somebody clipped the modulation limiter or something in here, I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll see in the meter back here in the video that it is putting out sort of the right amount of power. I think it's not putting out any more than 12 watts. So I'm um, not exactly sure what's going on, but it, it does need a little bit of work. The other radio I have here is my old President Grant. Um, I picked this up at an automotive flea market for something like five bucks. Now the radio itself is in great condition other than being dusty right now, except for a couple of holes that somebody drilled in the top case. Other than that, the thing seems like it's completely factory stock. Now this radio is technically not legal to use because it came from the factory with uh, channels outside of the normal 40. Uh, it also puts out about twice the amount of power it should it's putting out about 25 watts peak or so. The microphone that I have hooked up to it is an old Turner, uh, I don't remember what they call these things, plus three maybe, something. I got this also at a ham fest for five bucks. It was originally, belongs to N1 KRX, I guess. Now, it isn't pretty. You can see somebody spray painted it at one point in its life. And when I bought it, I really didn't think it was gonna work, but. It's worked fine. I used to run this thing on an ICOM uh, six meter all mode rig and it did just fine on that radio. Uh, but it, I got it wired for this old CB radio now and it seems to work just fine there. Anyway, this radio has got a lot of the same features that the Lafayette does uh, with the addition of course of the extra channels sort of built in. And this radio also has FM, which I believe is also illegal in the States, but at least around here in Connecticut, nobody uses FM anyway, so that's not really a thing. This one also has a built-in Roger beep, which is kind of neat if you like that sort of thing. Uh, but again, pretty much all the same controls, but in a smaller form factor. <laughs> now, I really like these old unit N radios. They're cool. They have good receivers in them, and they work well for CB. CQ, CQ, 741, Connecticut, calling CQ and standing by. Why? What's wrong with my number? Yeah, that would be my number. That's your number? That's my number. Oh, oh okay. Well, I guess, I guess you can have it then. I've only had it for 42 years. Okay. Well, I guess you got me beat. I've only had mine for about 11. So is there still a lot going on out here or what? I haven't had the radio on in many years. Okay, gotcha. All right. Hey, where'd you come up with your number from? Uh, it would be my birthday. Ah, <laughs> okay. No, mine, uh, mine's a uh, reference to my dad. Oh, Roger. Well, that's cool. It's a good number either way. Break 31, anyone got a copy? Yeah, you got a copy on this radio? I got a rough copy on you. I don't think those are the gentlemen that I'm talking to can hear you. Uh, okay, I just dug this thing out of the archives. It's an old uh, 1977 Lafayette SSB 140. Is it working? It's working. Uh, somebody walked over here, but something 40. Um, yeah, it's working. I'm up top on Great Lock. I can hear you. Oh wow, you sound good from up there. I'm uh, I'm down in Connecticut near uh, near uh, Yukon. Okay, copy that. Near Yukon. Well, for me, 55. I'm out in Tallinn County. Whereabouts are you? Out in Tallinn, not too far from you. The stores is like the next town over. I can't hear you too good though. Yeah, you're not too strong either. Where what, what part of Tallinn are you in? Yeah, I'm on the north end of town. Uh, there's some hills. That's probably what it is. It's pretty funny. I can talk to someone on Mount Greylock. That's, that's probably, what, 30, 40 miles from here. It's, it's weird how it works, doesn't it? All right, well, thanks, guys. I didn't mean to bust anything up. Just, uh, just dropping in. This is an old Lafayette Telsat SSB 140. 
I picked it up at a flea market a few years ago for like 20 bucks and uh, it had been slightly hacked <clears throat> but I went through it and, and took the hack out of it so now it's more or less 100% stock but uh, it's it's crusty and the microphone I have on it is not that great yeah rather that no it uh, doesn't sound bad uh, probably uh, could use a recap and uh, change all the electrolytics out in it that's uh I actually hooked my old man up with a CB because he is restoring a international CO1600 cap over truck, uh, 1966. So uh, I hooked him up with a 70s era Midland and, uh, you know, 23 channel rig. I went through it, uh, replaced all the insulators and thermal grease on the capacitors, uh, on the transistors, changed all the caps out, and... Uh, changed out the uh, volume potentiometer and things like brand new radio. Oh yeah, that's that's cool. I like doing stuff like that. I, I just don't have a lot of time. I'm always off on one project or another. Um, but I want to do that to this radio at some point. Yeah, Roger, uh, you try it out on AM? <clears throat> I actually did. I had it on the air a while ago and there was a guy up on Mount Greylock, and I talked to him. He heard me just fine. Well, I meant on AM. That's what I said. Yeah, he was on AM. It was Channel 31, AM. Oh, no fooling. I'm surprised you even got a word in on 31. That's usually clogged up with people arguing and all kinds of bull****. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty long haul just for a local there uh, up into, that's New Hampshire, um, uh, New Hampshire if I'm not mistaken, right? No, uh, northwest corner of Massachusetts, it's, that's the highest point in Mass. So that's probably what, I don't know, 60, 70 miles from us? Yeah, that's not bad at all. I wouldn't complain about that. Yeah, uh, i am uh, got a couple projects here of my truck, with my truck radio, uh, the plan is I'm going to bolt a uh, Wilson 2000 trucker, probably 5000 trucker on the uh, ladder rack. And uh, I'm going to run a, I, I want to order a newer like Bearcat 980 for it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. So if you're interested in CB radio and want to see more CB content, let me know it down in the comments. The other thing you can do is check out Farpoint Farms. Eric's got a great channel. He talks about many different things, but one of the things he covers on his channel is CB radio. So I'll leave a link down in the description if you haven't seen his channel and you're interested in CB, check that out too. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.